Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hymn. So, two months in a row, I think, or did I skip a month in between? I can't remember. Either way, I've got another round of favorites for you guys. I am trying new things. That is what is allowing me to bring you some new favorites. Um, you know, you think you have your tried and true products, the things that you love, the things that you, your go-to um, items in certain categories and areas in your sewing and craft room. Well, I have those too, and I decided, you know what? Maybe there is something better out there. Maybe I should try new things and see if I actually like them better. And in two cases today, that's absolutely what happened. So I'm gonna start with something neat. Unfortunately, these are not very visually appealing. They're like rolls of paper, but what's inside is really awesome. So you guys know we order a lot of patterns online, um, PDF patterns. We print them out at home. We cut off the edges, line everything up, tape it all together, then cut out the pattern. It's this whole process, right? And I found that what kept me from making a lot of those indie patterns and you know PDF patterns was that process of taping things together and kind of how inaccurate that felt. Um, and also kind of how difficult it is to store that stuff and how, I don't know, I just never really dug that process. But I thought it was the only way until I started seeing a bunch of people talking about um, sending off your files to a plotter. Um, a plotter has these huge machines. Um, they're usually doing like architectural, like, um, drawings or renderings, or, you know, if you've ever had like, I don't know, a building, if you've ever seen like a buildings, like map, or whatever, um, those huge pieces of paper are all printed on a plotter. And so there's really no reason why our patterns can't be either. So I tried pdfplotting.com. There are a few others out there that I haven't tried yet. I tried them because um, that's the one I heard people talk about the most. Um, and there were some very impressive qualities about them. One being price and two being time very important when it comes to sewing. So um, if your PDF patterns come with a copy shop file or an AO file or anything like that, which a lot of them are doing these days, um, then you can use pdfplotting.com to have them print your sewing patterns, those PDF sewing patterns, all on one long continuous sheet. Um, and it only costs, I think the largest file I have, so it depends on how big the file is, um, you know, how much roll of paper they're going to have to use. I think the most expensive one came in at like $1.90 or something like that. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, you do have to pay for shipping, which ended up being more than the cost of the patterns that I got printed. Um, but it is um, at least in the United States, it is the postal service. Um, it is their priority mail. So I ordered these on Sunday night and they showed up on Tuesday. So they are printing them right as you order them. There's no printing queue. There's no wait time for them to actually be printed. They're printing them right then and there and then getting them in a box and shipped to you the same day you order them. For, in my experience. Um, so in my mind, it was kind of like, well, gosh, I wouldn't have gotten around to printing and, and trimming and taping all of these pieces together in a couple of days anyways. So in theory, it was kind of like a huge time saver. And for me, a lot of times, um, time is money and I am willing to pay for something that saves me time. And then on top of that, it also saved me the frustration of like trying to figure, you know, all of that out. So I'm a huge fan of the plotters. I'm not sure I will ever print another PDF pattern at home. I mean, under the rare circumstance that I absolutely have to have it that day, I really just can't see myself ever doing that whole process again. Um, 
I, I really loved it. So pdfplotting.com, my number one favorite. Link in the description box. Have at it. Um, the second thing is related to that. So when I first started doing the PDF patterns, I was Team Trace. I was all about tracing and I always used Swedish tracing paper. Um, I liked it because it was very sturdy, very difficult to rip. It wasn't um, like pattern tissue. It's not like that at all. In fact, you can even sew Swedish tracing paper and make yourself like a paper muslin. There are a lot of great qualities to Swedish tracing paper. I have to admit, I've never once sewn Swedish tracing paper to make a muslin. I just never have. So I started thinking like, am I really getting the best value out of it? I mean, it is pretty expensive. Um, so I went to look for alternatives. I did not want the medical tracing paper. I did not like the quality of that. I did not like the way it felt. Um, I had used that at a friend's house in the past and just wasn't a big fan. But I did stumble upon this paper here and I forgot the name. Okay, so from what I can tell, based on the Amazon listing, it is called Bien Fang, Bien Fang, um, tracing paper. It is specifically manufactured for tracing. So it is meant to be see-through. So you can see lines of all thickness and thinness underneath it. Um, it's designed to be durable. Um, and the most interesting part of it to me was that you could get it in a bunch of different widths. So you could get, I think all the rolls are like 50 yards long, but width-wise, you could do everything from 12 inches all the way up to 36 inches. And so I thought to myself, well, if the pdfplotting.com is sending me 36 inch wide rolls, then I should get tracing paper to match so that I'm not having to do this kind of like Tetris with the tracing paper, like I have to do a lot with the Swedish tracing paper. So you can see this is the PDF plotting, printing, and this is the um, tracing, Bien Fang tracing paper. Can you see they're the exact same length? So I can literally just roll one out, roll out the pattern, and then roll the tracing paper right on top of it and easily trace and draw um, the pattern lines over it. Um, I also like how thin it is, but it is also still very crisp and also feels very durable to me. Um, so I really like that about it as well. And it's also affordable. So I got 50, 36 inches by 50 yards for like $20. So I think that's a pretty good deal for a lot of tracing paper that's, I feel like it's going to last me a long time. Um, I got it on Amazon and a quick note that you might not realize, but I have an inside the hem Amazon store, not like a store where I sell product, but a, it's almost like a collection of my favorite things that are on Amazon. So anytime I've ever mentioned a favorite, that is available on Amazon, I've put it in that little store. So I'm going to um, link down below my Amazon store and you guys can see there's like seam rippers and wonder clips and like all kinds of like fun stuff that I have featured on the channel in the past, all in one place on that Amazon store. It's an affiliate link, just so you know, I get a little bit of money if you guys end up buying anything out of my store, but you know, when you guys support me, I'm able to keep the channel going and it's just like the world goes round and round. <laughs> okay, so on to my third thing. A lot of people on Instagram have been asking, you know, whenever I post a picture and you can see my, like the inside of my garment, you guys will often see these um, labels. I have been getting my own labels printed for years. I've kind of gone through several iterations of designs and names and all of that kind of stuff. And I've recently landed on this design that feels very modern and edgy and actually like it, it could actually be a label. Um, but it's LJ, my initials, Lindsay Johns. Um, so I have those printed or made, I guess they're made, not printed. They're 
made. They're woven labels, really nice quality. I love them. And then I also get these other ones made um, that are like the like satin ribbon and these are printed on. And these say the first line handmade in the USA. And then I just generally size them with a medium with an M for medium slash 10 because I heard somewhere that if you donate your handmaids to Goodwill and they don't have a label and a size, they'll end up throwing them away. And so I just thought, well, if I just generically size them to where it's like close enough to what I would be in ready to wear, then A, it has a size on it so it doesn't get tossed and B, when someone's there shopping, they can more likely find something that will fit them and then buy it and then you know, keep it in the world without it going into the trash and the landfills. So that's why I got these, this particular kind made. I usually end up putting both of them in my garments like so, um, but you don't have to. You can easily just use one or the other because the LJ is written on both of them. There's also washing instructions. Again, very general, something that applies to most of the garments that I make. You know, washing cool water, tumble dry low, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You, you guys know by now that most of the stuff that we make, you can wash in a machine in some form. So that's what's there. Um, and then it says... Machine wash cold, tumble dry low, press if necessary, wear it proudly. So I just thought, is it going to focus? Maybe not. So I just thought that that was a cute, sweet way to kind of give a little bit of personality to the garment if it ever ends up in the world again. You know, it does say handmade, so maybe someone would think that that was like, you know, kind of extra cool. But um, but yeah, I just I just couldn't bear the thought of like me finally deciding to like, part with a garment that I had made, which is hard enough as it is, and then it ended up being tossed in the trash simply because it didn't have a label. So if you are donating your clothes in any fashion as well, um, I don't know, just maybe be on the safe side and go ahead and grab some labels. I do love dutchlabelshop.com, which is where I get mine. I'll have a link in the description box. Again, very affordable. You get this one with the like washing instructions has 50 of them in there. I want to say, I can't remember how much they were to be honest with you, but you get a bunch. I mean, you get a bunch, um, in each pack, but not too many. It's not like wholesale where you're buying hundreds either at the same time. Does that make sense? Anyways, I really love Dutch label shop. So if you're looking to make labels for yourself, you can head there. If you don't have a little logo or anything like that, that's okay. They have little like, um, this little thing where you can type in a name and then change out the, um, fonts. And then you can even add little pictures and icons and make it real cutesy if you want. Um, they also have generic ones that are already designed for you that say something like handmade with love or stuff like that. So lots and lots of options there. So those are my favorites for this month. I hope you found something that might be new and interesting. Um, if you have an item that you absolutely love that you haven't heard me mention before, or you think I should try, leave it in the comments below. I've um, asked you guys to do this in my last favorites video, and I got a ton of really great responses. Some things literally I had never heard of before. I'd never even knew existed. So I'm working on getting those here and trying them out and all of that so that I can give you a proper opinion as to whether or not it's a favorite. Um, but yeah, let's keep that going. If you, you know, have an item that you absolutely can't live without, let me know about it in the comments below and I will add it to my list. But um, that's going to do it for me today. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon. Bye.